Um, all right, let's do this Prager U video because I said we were going to talk about Prager U and then I haven't all stream. Of course, I have like three of them in my notes that I wanted to talk about. This one is called Eye for an Eye, one of the greatest ideas in history. Obviously, a lot of people know I was raised in an evangelical Christian family. Um, and I know even within my family, there was a lot of debate about eye for an eye. Um, and I know one of my cousins was like, an eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind. You know, we need forgiveness. Um, so there's a lot of debate within the um, Christian evangelical religion about this eye for an eye quote, um, which drew me to this video. But of course, Dennis Prager is going to make like the dumbest argument he possibly could about it. So let's watch it and then discuss. Even atheists acknowledge that the book that's most responsible for creating Western civilization is the Bible. Until very recently, that was considered quite an achievement. After all, it was Western civilization that created societies rooted in individual liberty, rooted in democracy, that affirmed the equality of all people, and which gave the world the notion of universal human rights. And we've achieved none of these things. Western society today has absolutely none of these things. They maybe have individual liberty for a dude like Dennis Prager. You know, if you have a bunch of money at your disposal and material possessions, but we don't have a democracy. 93% of our elections are decided by the candidate who raises the most money. Our laws are written by corporate lobbyists. There's basically no point to voting. Both parties are the same. We obviously don't have e equality. We're one of the most unequal countries in the entire world, um, not to mention the racial inequalities that exist, but economically, we're one of the worst. Um, and of course, if you're working class, you have no individual liberty. You're a wage slave who constantly has to sell yourself, sell your labor. Um, and then hoard your money and not spend it at all if you want to retire someday. And of course, the idea of human rights has become a joke. Western society has turned the idea of universal human rights to a joke. Because we say things like we need to go invade Iraq to protect human rights. And then we kill millions of people. And then it's like, hmm, that doesn't seem like it's upholding human rights very well, killing millions of people so we can steal their oil, destroying Libya and throwing their country into civil war and disaster and bringing the slave market back. That doesn't seem like it protects human rights. Yet human rights are still what we use to justify every imperialist intervention. So good job, Western civilization. You failed to live up to any of your core goals. Of course, these unique moral ideals took centuries to be realized, and the ideals were often violated. But only the West formulated these ideals, let alone achieved them, and then spread them around the world. In the last half century, however... <sighs> we didn't achieve them. We didn't achieve them nor spread them all around the world. This is just a myth. This is like the most old school colonial myth too. Because he's like, you know, Western civilization is based on the Bible. And we spread the Bible all around the world. That's like old school colonialism. Like we're going to teach these savages whose resources we're stealing, you know, the Bible. And we're going to teach them Western, the values of Western civilization, which is far superior because I live in the West, and I think so. Even though we failed to live up to any of our ideals, we're qualified to enforce our ideals on the rest of the world and kill anybody who disagrees. Like, yes, what a success Western civilization has been for siphoning resources out of the entire global South, all into the hands of a bunch of fat, pudgy, disgusting losers who look like they haven't done a hard day's work in their life, like, life, like Dennis Prager. Yes, I'm so glad we have a civilization, a murderous imperialist civilization run by pudge balls like this. Well, truly, we have, we've really succeeded. Society could never improve from this. However, many of the recipients of these gifts, especially the well-educated, no longer regarded Western civilization as morally superior to any other. 
And as reverence for Western civilization fell, so did reverence for the source of that civilization. The Bible has not only been neglected, but reviled as a foolish fairy tale at best and as an immoral work at worst. This view springs. I mean, your beloved Western civilization did use the Bible as justification for brutal violence and colonialism that goes against all the key tenets of the Bible and the teachings of the Bible. Like, maybe if you didn't go to Africa and start stealing all their resources and beating them over the head with Bibles, then people wouldn't have such a negative view of your Western religion. Maybe if you didn't use religion to justify murderous colonialism every step of the way. That kind of seems like your fault, though, Dennis. You and the other capitalist imperialists who are so greedy, you have to continually steal from Africa and Latin America and Southern Asia. Brings not from intellectual rigor, but from intellectual laziness. People throw out all sorts of objections to the Bible as if there were no rational and moral responses to those objections. But the fact is, there are rational and moral responses to all those objections. I give many of them in my book, the Rational Bible. But let me offer two here. In the biblical book of Deuteronomy, it says, if someone has a rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother, his parents can take him to the elders of the city for judgment. And if the son is found guilty, the citizens are to stone him to death. Sounds pretty primitive, doesn't it? In fact, however, it was an enormous moral leap forward. This law ended forever. Parental ownership of their children, and with it, the right to kill them. The brilliance of this law was that it seemed to preserve the absolute authority of parents, but in fact, ended it. But you will respond, the citizens of the city could still kill the child. Theoretically, that was true, but we have no instance of it ever happening in the history of the Jews, the people who yeah, but Dennis, if your parents would have just not had you, the world would be a better place. So that kind of debunks your whole argument here. Who brought the book into the world and lived by its rules. Critics of Western religion also often cite the famous biblical law, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, etc., as another example of an immoral biblical law. But this law, known by its Latin name, Lex Talionis, the law of retaliation, was another great moral advance. It was not meant to be taken literally. And it also, if we were to follow this eye for an eye, do you know how much violence and theft that Africa and Latin America would be allowed to enact on Europe and the United States and North America? Like, if you really believe in this, Dennis, then people from the global south should come up and beat you over the head, torture and kill you, and steal all your wealth. If you really believe in eye for an eye, because that's what you did to the global south, that's what your wealth is based upon. So put your money where your mouth is, buddy. Let people from the global south come beat the shit out of you and steal all your money if you believe in eye for an eye. And it never was, for the simple reason that it's impossible to exactly duplicate bodily harm. Only a life for a life was meant literally, and taken literally, there is capital punishment for premeditated murder. So then, what did it mean? For one thing, Lex Talionis is the ultimate statement of human equality. Every person's eye is as precious as anyone else's. The eye of a prince is worth no more than the eye of a peasant. Then why are your oil profits? And the oil profits of corporations more important than the millions of lives that we took in Iraq. Like this is just, you would have to, to believe this, you would have to completely ignore reality and completely ignore everything that Western civilization has done. The way that Western civilization has gained its wealth through imperialism and exploitation of workers in the home country. This was completely new in history. The Babylonian Code of Hammurabi, for example, legislated that the eye of a noble was of much greater value than the eye of a commoner. Second, the principle of an eye. How do you not believe that? There are people living homeless. 
There are millions of people starving to death every day while you live in immense wealth when you've never worked a day in your life. And you're telling me that you believe everybody is equal? Like, is this a joke? We live in one of the most unequal countries in the world in terms of wealth and income. And you're like, I know that I'm hoarding all the wealth while people starve and live on the streets. But, you know, I'm still equal to those people. If I gouged out one of their eyes, they would be allowed to take one of mine. If you ignore all the, you just ignore all the people who we actually killed and, and gouged the eyes out of in uh, the global south to gain all this wealth. For an eye insured, only the guilty party was punished for his crime. In other law codes and in common practice, if you killed someone's daughter, your daughter would be killed. That was expressly prohibited in the Bible and by the eye for an eye code. Now the killer would be punished, not the killer's daughter. Third, Lex Talionis prohibited unjust revenge. In the ancient world, if a man gouged out another man. This is a good one, Jacob. If he believes an eye for an eye, then he doesn't get to complain if Japan nukes two civilian cities in America. Like, yeah, how many things could you go through? How many crimes of Western civilization could we go through and say, well, these countries get to do us do this to us now because of eye for an eye. You know, Latin America gets to do Operation Condor. They get to kill and torture every single person in America with an ideology that they disagree with. Hundreds of thousands of people to control so Latin America can control and manipulate American politics and economics. Got to do it. It's eye for an eye. We did it to them. We did Operation Condor to them. It's only fair that they do it to us. And I, the victim, if he could, would gouge out both the attacker's eyes or kill him or hurt his children and so on. In contrast, eye for an eye ensured the victim receive appropriate compensation for the damages he suffered, but the punishment had to fit the crime. The next time you read or hear someone argue that the Bible is irrational or immoral, tell them how the Stone the Rebellious Son law ended parental killing of children, and how the eye for an eye law struck a unique blow for human equality. What if they bring up a different part of the Bible? Or what if they bring up the way that the Bible was used to justify European colonialism in Africa? Like, you... I'm just supposed to bring up this one section of the Bible that you think is good that we totally don't follow today. And that's an argument for why the whole Bible is correct and rational and moral. I don't think that's going to work in a real argument, Dennis. I'm pretty sure that only works if you're a billionaire who can megaphone your voice across the airwaves and ignore any rational critiques of what of the dumbass shit you're saying. And justice. If they're intellectually honest, they'll admit that they have learned something new. I'm Dennis Prager. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation. There's the request for donations, tax-deductible, of course. So if you're a billionaire, you can use this as a tax write-off and say you're giving to charity. <laughs> To keep PragerU videos free. Dude, our videos are free here at Midwestern Marks, and I have 25 bucks in my bank account right now. You have millions of dollars. Get fucked. <laughs> what are you talking about to keep these videos free? You have millions of dollars to produce these videos. We're keeping our videos free for a fraction. You ridiculous man. Ridiculous, these capitalists. These are the people who run our society, y'all. These are the people. These dudes who have never worked a day in their lives. These condescending, arrogant bastards. <laughs> Enough of this. Enough of this. It's time to overthrow these pampered, lying goons like Dennis Prager. Enough of this. I want working class proletarians in charge of my society. 
not pampered, greasy liars like Dennis. Emphasis on the greasy. Prager U belongs to the workers now. It does. My The Bible allows me to sell my daughters into slavery and kill people if they work on the day of the Sabbath. Rational. Eddie is on fire. Thank you. I'm feeling feeling it today. 